One of the early uses of X-ray technology was the shoe store fluoroscope. This device consisted of a handsome wooden cabinet, about four and a half feet high, with two shoe-sized slots at the base on one side and a viewer at the top. Two additional viewers were angled off the top on the opposite side. Next to the viewers were controls for a timer, amperage, and an internal pointer. Hidden within the box were an x-ray tube and a fluorescent screen. A customer would try on a pair of shoes, then place his feet in the slots, set the amps, crank the timer, and then watch as his feet were bathed in active radiation. The x-rays passed up through an aluminum filter, his feet and his shoes. The image on the screen glowed in yellowish green and provided a ghostly outline of the shoes and clear images of the bones of the feet. Since it was happening in real time, wiggling your toes made the bones move. Usually the subject was a child. He and his mother and the salesman could each watch his tiny bones through the three viewfinders. The salesman used the internal pointer to comment on the fit of the shoe. Shoe fluoroscopes were a big hit. The use of x-rays was novel and customers flocked to see the bones of their feet wiggle. Children loitered in shoe stores after school watching their feet and their friends' feet. It became a group activity, and best of all, it was free. Ads promoting the fluoroscope claimed that you could get a better fit using the technology. A better fit meant more comfort, increased health, and a longer lasting shoe. Clearly, shoe stores that had fluoroscopes made more sales and profits than those that didn't. They were a great sales gimmick, and stores bought them by the thousands. But there were some business problems with fluoroscopes. They were expensive for the shoe stores to buy and took up lots of floor space. They actually diverted attention away from the sales of shoes, since many customers just wanted to see their feet. On Saturday mornings, the long lines of feet lookers blocked the aisles. The reality was that using the X-ray shoe fitter was pointless. The fit of a shoe is primarily based on the soft tissue of the foot, not the bones. The X-ray images didn't show soft tissue. A more serious problem with the X-ray apparatus was that it produced and leaked radiation, a lot of radiation. The KVP X-ray tube used three to eight milliamps and in the continuous 20 second mode was a formidable health hazard. Most scopes produced seven to 14 rem of radiation to the feet for a 20 second exposure. Rem is the older system of measuring radiation. The American Standards Association in the 1950s recommended an exposure of not more than two rem for a five second period. Today, the safety threshold is about one one thousandth of this number. In addition to the radiation to the feet, scatter radiation all around the machine was also significant, often measured at one tenth rem at a distance of 10 feet. So how bad was this? For the occasional shoe shopper who might unwittingly dose herself and her children with radiation a couple of times a year, not so bad. For the kids and their friends who hung around radiating their feet every day, serious. For the shoe salespeople who were given a steady exposure to the radiation scattering from the fluoroscope, priceless. After a few months, they probably absorbed enough radiation to glow in the dark. Eventually, regulations on fluoroscope usage were imposed by most states. By 1970, almost all states had banned their use. In 1981, the last shoe store fluoroscope, found in an old department store in Madison, West Virginia, had its plug pulled. <laughs>